Now I want to get into the lesson for today for what God has placed on my heart. And the lesson that we're going to talk about is, is the fact that his name shall be declared throughout all the earth. His name, speaking of the name of Jesus Christ, shall be declared throughout all the earth. Now my theme is gonna come out of Romans chapter nine. And so growing up as a youngster, uh, I had heroes. When I, whenever I watched cartoons, I had heroes. And one of my favorite heroes was Superman. And the primary reason that uh, Superman was my hero was the fact that it seemed like Superman always came to save the day. I mean, if a little girl got a cat stuck in the tree, Superman was gonna be there to deliver that cat back to the little girl. If uh, a plane was getting ready to crash, took a nose dive, right before impact, Superman will arrive just in time to prevent the plane from crashing and preventing a, a catastrophe. And then of course, if, if there was a burglar or a crime uh, about to be committed in a store, Superman will arrive just in time to interrupt the crime. And so he was, he was my favorite hero. And one of the primary reasons was is that he always overcame a major obstacle to make everything all right. And that gave us the basis of who he really was. And this is our theme in the book of Romans chapter number nine and verse number 17. Watch what Paul writes in verse number 17. I'm just gonna use one scripture because there's so much to unpack in Romans chapter nine. Now I'm gonna use this one point. It says this in verse 17, for the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. And so that's our theme. But the thing that I wanna point out out of verse number 17 is the fact that even for this same purpose, Paul says, have I raised up Pharaoh. It's important to understand that Pharaoh denotes something negative. Pharaoh denotes something that is evil, or it could indicate a crisis in your life. It could be a problem or a predicament you can even see it as a, a great mountain, challenge in your life, adversity that you have to deal with, or of course, finally, a crushing blow. So we have to view, in order to understand the theme of this lesson, we gotta understand what Pharaoh represents. And he represents something that's not good and something that you must overcome. And so the Bible says that God raised him up so that his hand might show his power. And so uh, a lot of people ask the question and they say, well, why do bad things happen to good people? And sometimes uh, I want to, to share with you here that God allows or permits things to reveal himself. If you look at the scripture, that's what it's saying. He will permit or allow something negative happen, and, but yet he'll reveal himself to you because he'll show you his power. When you have to depend on him, he'll show you who he is. And so he doesn't allow these things to come upon you because he doesn't love you, but he allows it so that his name might be declared throughout all the earth. And so that leads me to this point that you've got to understand the nature and character of God. You've got to understand his tendencies. And so if you look in Isaiah, uh, chapter number 45, you know, and, and I want to read a couple scriptures here that I think is very important because when you understand the plan and purpose of God, it helps you to deal with whatever circumstance that you're going through in your life. So look at Isaiah chapter number 45. And when it comes to the nature and character of God, his tendencies, he says this, he says, thus saith the Lord to his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand have I holden to subdue nations before him, and I will loose the loins of kings to open before him the two leave gates, and the gates shall, be, uh, shall not be shut. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in places the gates of brass and cut in asunder bars of iron. I'm gonna drop down here to verse number five. Watch this, it says, I am the Lord and there is none else. There's no God beside me. I, I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. That's important, I point that out. 
And then he says that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there is none else. Last verse. I form the light. I create darkness. I make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Now, you're probably thinking there like, wow, the Lord is doing all of this? Yes. That's why the Bible says he declares the end from the beginning. In, in, a, in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 46, verse number nine, and then verse number 10, he says, hey, I'll call a ravenous bird from the east, a man that executeth my counsel. That's when the Bible speaks of Cyrus, whom we just mentioned. Cyrus was a wicked king and God took him and anointed him to do what he wanted him to do. And so he used Cyrus to, to deliver Israel. Sometimes you wouldn't even pray if you didn't go through some issues. You wouldn't even uh, look to God if you didn't have certain circumstances. You had to deal with certain issues you had to deal with in your life. You wouldn't even look to God. So God will use, he could take a negative means to bring about a positive result. And so therefore we've got to look, we've got to know those tendencies and the character of God. I want you to see something here because I want to point something else that I think is very significant. If you go to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter number seven, because uh, Romans uh, 9, 17, our theme of this lesson, it says again, even for the same purpose of I raised up Pharaoh that I might show my power. Now, notice here in Exodus chapter seven, where God has dialogue with Moses, where he says, hey, Moses, go tell Pharaoh in verse number two of Exodus chapter seven. He says, uh, go speak all that I command and Aaron, thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh that they send the children of Israel out of his land. But in verse number three, God says to Moses, but I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart. See, that's that's the character. That's the nature of God. He will. He's showing you his sovereignty. He's showing you his hand. He's showing you his authority. Then he goes on. If you go on to chapter number nine, he says here in verse number one, it says, then the Lord said unto Moses again, go into unto Pharaoh and tell him, thus saith the Lord of Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they might serve me. But then if you go down to verse number 12 of Exodus nine, he said, the Bible says, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart that he hearkened not to the voice of Moses. So you see here, uh, I mean, it's all over the Bible. And I, and I love pointing this out because it reminds us that, uh, that God has is, is, is got this thing all together. Sometimes life can be so chaotic that we think, um, you know, things are out of control. Lord, what are you going to do? But you know what? Nothing can move unless it goes through the fingers of God. And God has, he, he, while we're trying to figure it out, he already got it worked out. So if you, even if you go to Exodus chapter number 10, here's another point. My last point in Exodus, it goes on in verse number one. It says, and the Lord said unto Moses, go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart. He's telling Moses one thing. And then he's doing a whole nother thing saying, I'm hardening his heart. Sometimes you have situations that will come against you because, or a boss that will come against you or another person in the relationship come against you because God may be hardened the heart because perhaps you're under a testing. Every faith has got to be tested. And so uh, he's got, you say you're a person of faith. God said, well, 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 let's see what kind of faith you have because I'm gonna allow some things to, to challenge you and let's see how you handle it. So we see here that God reveals, ladies and gentlemen, his authority, his sovereignty to manifest himself. How would you know that God could raise Lazarus from the dead except he allowed Lazarus to die? How would you know that he can open a blind man's eye except he allowed the man to be born blind? How would you know what a miracle is if you, you've never been in a place of a hopeless situation or a helpless situation? That's how God reveals himself to you. There are some folk that will say to you, oh, you just see my glory, but you don't know my story. But I'm here to tell you today that sometimes 
God will interrupt your story and destroy your short story <laughs> so that he can show his glory. You see, again, his name must be declared throughout all the earth. Now, when I was a little boy, I was about two years old, I, I was told the story uh, that as a two-year-old, I was very busy. And my father, who's a traveling evangelist, Elder Marshall, three more minutes, Taylor Sr., he was driving on I-94, uh, headed somewhere from Chicago back to Detroit. He was near Detroit Metro Airport, and my mother was in the front seat, uh, eight months pregnant, my sister and a couple saints in the back seat. They fell asleep. Me as a baby, I'm, I'm at what I do, I'm busy. I pull the latch on the door while he's driving 70 miles an hour and I go flying out the door on I-94, one of the busiest highways in the state of Michigan. So when my father realized that I flew out, my mother told me that he didn't even want to look back. He just pulled on over to the side and she just knew, he, he, she told me he just knew I was crushed. So she jumped out of the car to head back to me, only to realize that God's mighty hand intervened into the situation and prevented me from being run over. So what that means is I have a purpose. I'm here for a reason. <laughs> and my mother, she has a testimony. She went from a test to a testimony that uh, God's hand was prevalent, it prevailed in this situation, and God's hand will prevail in your situation no matter how tough that situation is. And so again, God will allow some things to test you, but then he'll bring about a positive result. Sometimes you have to go, uh, people of God, backwards before you go frontwards. So uh, I like that verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it applies to this lesson. It says, but we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. And so what that verse is telling you is, although you have been saved, you got to understand that you are being saved. You're going through the process of sanctification where you are being tested, your faith is being tested, you're going through experiences, you're going through circumstances where you take some blows, you take some hits in life. And, and, and but then you, God shows his hand of deliverance and brings you out of it. And so now you're, it builds up your faith. That's sanctification where he, he's working on your mind, your will and your emotions, and, and he's working out the fleshly part of you. And, and he's implementing some of the spiritual things within you so that when you when he gets through with you, you'll be without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. <laughs> when I hear that without spot or wrinkle, I think about a hot iron, how what it does to a shirt. Sometimes you've got to face the fire. Sometimes that iron is sitting on your situation, just like an iron sit on a, on a shirt but then you've got to understand when he's done, when you are glorified, when he comes back for the church and he's coming back for the church. And so that's the whole point. God has a plan. He has a process uh, to bring about and declare and manifest his name in the earth. Now I want to visit this, this last text uh, lesson and, and text that I think is, is very significant that'll even further strengthen this lesson. If you look in St. John chapter number nine, I want you to understand here in, in chapter number nine where we've got a blind man that was born blind. Of course, uh, St. John chapter number eight reveals blindness to the Pharisees. Jesus revealed their blindness. He that is without sin cast the first stone. Then they begin to realize, oh, I sin too. I can't point my finger. But then in St. John chapter number nine, he heals blindness. And so I want you to watch this because in verse number nine, Jesus says, it says, the Bible says, and Jesus passed by and he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him saying, master, who did sin, this man or his parents that he was born blind? 
And then Jesus answered and said unto them, neither have this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Here we go again. See, so many people think that the reason that they're going through something heavy is because uh, I, I did something and God just getting me back. No, that, that's not why God many times uh, allows some things to come upon you, that test to come upon you. It's, it's not because perhaps you, because of something you did, sometimes it's because of something he did. He allowed that man to be born blind. But here's, here's the catch. Whenever you have a situation, it's good to go to Jesus, just like the blind man did. He went to Jesus. I need some help. I was born blind. I heard about you, Jesus. I heard about your the miracle working power. And so can you restore my sight? And so uh, the blind man goes to Jesus and Jesus, the Bible indicates he spits on the ground and makes clay. I mean, he, and then puts it over his eyes. <laughs> so, so now the blind man is like, wait a minute, I, I'm already in a bad situation. But now, Jesus, you, you have made my situation worse. You see, many times you're in a situation. You're actually in the situation room <laughs> and your back is against the wall and you go to Jesus. You went to the right one. And then all of a sudden, after you go to Jesus, after you done prayed and fasted, then you seem like your situ situation got worse. <laughs> and that's what happened with the blind man. His situation got worse. He said, now you put mud in my eye. And, and, and one thing that, that you got to realize here is that sometimes the way of the Lord is that things will get worse before they get better. That's why it's important not to give up, not to throw in the towel. That's why the Bible gives you all these clues in Matthew 24. He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. And so, uh, you got to understand here that sometimes you're going to be in some muddy situations. What does mud represent in the eye? You ever had mud or dirt in your eye? It's irritable. I used to play football and, and, uh, and, I'm, and I'm telling you, especially growing up on those Detroit, uh, Detroit football fields, I mean, it's a lot of dirt. <laughs> and, and, and when it rains, and the mud gets out there. I've got mud in my eyes. I've got dirt in my eyes. And I'm here to tell you that it irritates your eyes. It hurts. It don't feel good. It just irritates you. And what this represents with the blind man is that sometimes when you go to God, when you go to Lord, to the Lord on your situation, it will get worse. It will get irritable. Somebody's got a muddy situation going on in your life right now. Somebody has got a, a situation that has been lingering and it's irritating, it's debilitating, it's breaking you, it's causing you all kinds of anxiety because of this irritation of mud in your life. But I'm here to tell you there is a solution. And Jesus gave the solution to the blind man and he told him, he said, go to the pool of Siloam and wash the mud out of your eye. Do you know how happy that man must have been to Say, man, now I can get this mud out of my eye. So the question becomes, what does the pool of Siloam represent? Well, uh, we know, of course, when you wash your eye and you got something in your eye, it's going to represent getting cleansing and, and, and washing that stuff out so it won't irritate you and you can come seeing. And so here, but here in the word from a spiritual standpoint, what Jesus is saying, it comes out of John 15 and three, where Jesus said, you know what? You are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Uh, and, we, and we have seen that in one of the accounts in the synoptic gospels where Jesus spoke a word and a blind man, another blind man was healed just from a spoken word. But in this case, it's the mud. But he says, you're clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. And then, of course, in Ephesians chapter number five, verse 26, Jesus says, uh, Paul writes, rather, you are washed by the water of the word. See, there's some significance there. And what it's telling you is that although you went to Jesus and your situation may have gotten worse, but yet you're exercising faith and you're enduring the situation. But now he's saying, 
Go to the word of God, because when you go to the word of God, it'll bring about your deliverance. And it is a washing of the water of the word and you will come seeing. See, that's what this is all about. You, you got to see what's happening. And, 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 and so when you see that how, what God is working out in your life, that is a marvelous testimony. And again, you will go from that test to the testimony. So we see here in this lesson, it is why do we have these Pharaoh experiences? And the answer is in Romans 9, 17, he says that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. The second question is, uh, again, why am I having this Pharaoh experience? John chapter nine, verse three says that the works of God should be made manifest. Then he goes on for the last one in Exodus seven and five. Why do we have the Pharaoh experience? He told Moses that they, that Israel shall know that I am the Lord. So you've got to have that attitude that though he slay me, yet will I still trust him. And so when it comes to what we're dealing with in our culture today, as I'm getting ready to close and just you just give me three minutes <laughs> and I'm going to close this. But even in the culture, when you look in the culture, I mean, it's chaotic. It's crazy out there. Some crazy things are happening, happening. Ratchet sales. I mean, Wrong is right now. So we, we dealing with this crazy culture, but I like what the scripture says in second Thessalonians chapter number two and verse number two, it says that ye be not soon shaken in mind or troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by leather from us as that the day of Christ is at hand. So what y'all got to understand, what we all have to understand, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what you going through, or what you're seeing in the culture, just know that those are signs for you to get yourself and pull yourself together and not be soon shaken. You can't be shaken up to give up because you're going through emotionally. You can't get soon shaken and emotional because you're, you're having a financial problem or a problem vocationally. But he's saying that what you've got to do is realize that the coming of the Lord is near. And so that means we got to get ourselves ready because his name shall be declared throughout all the earth. And once you see that, once you wash your eyes out by the washing of the water of the word, then you see the need to serve and follow Jesus Christ. Once my eyes, once our eyes are open to see what God and who he is and what he's doing and what his purpose is, you will realize that this is all about a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so I want everybody to realize, even those that you might not be born again, you got to realize and see the need. As Acts 4 and 12 says, neither is that salvation in any other, for there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus that every knee bows and every tongue confesses. And so you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. And so as I close here, you've got to understand here that the grace of God is prevalent in our lives. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And so we got a reason to give him praise. We got a reason to give him glory because he saved us even when we did not deserve it. And the Bible indicates one of my favorite verses, for by grace you are saved and that's through faith. It's not of yourselves, it's a gift, lest any man should boast. So be encouraged today and let your identity be on Jesus Christ. The world must know who you identify with. It shouldn't be no mistake about who you represent. Your life should represent and identify with Jesus Christ. That's why I like what Paul says in Galatians uh, chapter number two, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, is Christ that liveth within me. And this, this life that I live, I live it by faith in the Son, Jesus Christ. And so God bless you today, be encouraged, and know that God can and God will 
lead and guide you into all truth. And we've got to understand that his name, no matter what takes place in the earth, his name shall be declared throughout all the earth. We walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you. We love you all in Jesus' name.